So, okay, cool. So uh, portfolio reviews, there's general things that I'm gonna recommend. Uh, we can go into specifics, but they're subjective in a lot of ways. So I know you'll have questions about general things to include and also about aesthetic things, um, but I want you to take some of the advice with a grain of salt because everybody has an opinion. And you're gonna get lots of different advice because as designers, especially senior designers, we have very strong opinions about what we like and what we don't like. And you're not gonna please everyone. I mean, it's just like when you're designing something for like people, you can't, you can't win with everybody. You can't necessarily, you're not, not everybody's gonna like it. So I just want you to keep that in mind as we go through this uh, discussion tonight. Portfolios are probably, probably gonna be your biggest stress point, although they might not be. Did I share the screen that says portfolios week three? Awesome. Yes. Okay, cool, good. Cause I've, I've shared the wrong screen before. Okay, so I'm glad you guys are back. Um, Here's where we are, week three. So next week, when we talk about interviews, my plan is to have Carl Wheatley, from, who's a recruiter for Facebook, to come and talk to you all about getting ready for interviews. So he's accepted, he's supposed to be here. Hopefully uh, there won't be a conflict that comes up, but should be really good uh, talk. And I have some materials that I'll be um, sending out to you guys as we get ready for that process. So but tonight we'll focus on your portfolios. Okay, so I wanna hear from you guys. What do you think, or what have you heard is important for your portfolio? Storytelling. Storytelling, what else? The problems. <clears throat> problem, the problem. What else, uh, did I miss one? Show your process. It shows your, yes, process, like how you problem solve. Yes, that's good. What else? Also showing your impact. Showing impact, yes, I've said that a lot, haven't I? Yes, what else? What you learned. Yeah, lessons learned. Um, anything else that you all have heard from your various, I'm sure you've looked it all up. Sorry, say that again, it was hard to hear. Like yeah, sorry. So keeping each section uh, as long as a tweet, don't go over uh, 120 words. Brevity. So some people have really strong feelings about how long or short uh, your description should be. All great, great points. I'm not going to disagree with any of that necessarily, but I'm going to go through some things that I've been doing some research on and then also what I feel from looking at portfolios is really important. So um, it happens that I'm in the Google UX certification course just to see what they do. And I went through portfolio week. So I stole some of their stuff too. Uh, and I totally agree uh, with this because I've been saying it as well. The, one of the biggest things is to make it personal. How you make it personal is up to you. You know, it might be a photo like what you see here from Marcos, um, but it could also be an illustration. It could be the way that you have some sort of statement about yourself. The main thing is think, thinking about your brand. You have a brand. This is um, your marketing strategy for yourself as a job seeker, as someone who's going to be presenting yourself as a designer to potential companies that you want to work for. So you have to establish what that brand is, and it needs to be distinctive. It needs to be how you want to present yourself to them and across all of your social platforms. So it needs to be consistent. And what really is key is that you have to stand out. Can't look like everybody else. It needs to be you. You're unique. You're a unique individual and it needs to be you. So, you know, when you, when you think of someone like famous, how they present themselves, that's their brand. You have a brand too. Okay, so um, as you're thinking about how you want yourself to be portrayed, I want you to really think about that. You know, like, what is important to me? Am I a product designer? Am I a visual designer? What are, what is, what is it that you're trying to get across? If you look at my brand, it may not be completely consistent, but I've really tried to make it consistent. Uh, I have the same headshot, 
across everything. The way that I'm speaking is the same, like in the voice and tone of how I talk, um, what's really like things I'm passionate about. Those, those things are everywhere and including on my portfolio, uh, which I really need to redesign, uh, but I don't have time. <laughs> so uh, I'm not doing it right now, but it's for you, you need to be working on this on your, on your portfolio. Somebody mentioned earlier, telling a story. You need to tell the story of your process, of how you do it from beginning, middle, and end. Okay, so problem, solution, impact, whatever it is you did. Okay, and then you can go through and fill in all the details. That's people, people are not engaged if it's not a story. So that's why I want you to tell a story so that you can make it engaging for the people that are looking at your portfolio. Um, and this, I like this portfolio. This is Oliver. He actually uh, came to me for a portfolio review. It's been, it's been a while, maybe a year. And then um, he applied for one of the positions at Standard Beagle. And he's great. He has a great brand. It's very consistent. Um, he's got his personality coming out. And I really, it was engaging when I was reading his case study. So he's a, I'll, I'll give you a whole, I have a whole bunch of links in the homework and the um, the materials that um, Sandy and Devin are gonna share out. So I made a link to all the portfolios that I like and I'm, I keep adding to that list. Um, here is, uh, Sandy shared a portfolio that she liked, so I took a screenshot of it. Um, and I think it's a great example of keeping your navigation simple. So um, don't overthink navigation on your site. Just make sure that people can get to the sections that they need to. Um, you know, Veronica has the portfolio where, you know, you can look at all of her case studies, you can look at her about, she's got some art also that she wants to portray that don't necessarily go with the UX stuff and a contact. So very, very simple. You wanna make sure that on every page, somebody can get back to the homepage. You wanna make sure they can easily get to contact you um, and, and also navigate from case study to case study. So your piece of work to your piece of work. Um, show a diversity of projects that you can do. Okay, so um, if you're if you know if you're solely focused and only want to get a job as an interaction designer, then show interaction design work. Okay, uh, but most designers want to probably have a breadth of work on there. So um, show different facets of the things that are important to you. So if you have one that's more focused on research. You can show that and also have something that's maybe more focused on visual. Um, it's okay, show that diversity. Uh, we want, I want to know the kinds of things that you do. Um, and here's an example of a Google designer um, and their portfolio, which ironically, all the Google designer portfolios literally look the same. I'm not gonna, I, I actually am not that impressed with them. Not gonna lie. Uh, but uh, this one is a, it's a good portfolio. It's a good portfolio and it shows a breadth of work. Some other tips, okay? So I always tell people this, explain why you're doing something. So um, sometimes I'll read a, a case study and they'll say, first I did the research and uh, then I did a persona. And then I, you know, it was like, it's almost like a checklist, but I really, really wanna know is why you're choosing to do this. You know, like we don't have to follow the same things every single time we make choices about why we're doing things. I want to know why you're doing things because I want to know if you can think. So um, it's important to explain like, you know, we started off in this process because we wanted to find out this. And as we went through our process, we realized that we needed to do add this, you know, whatever it is. I need to know what your why is. And that, again, shows that you can think, that you have critical thinking skills, which is really important as a designer, to have critical thinking skills and be able to speak up and say, like, this is the reason why I made the decision that I made. Um, your, your people that are reviewing your portfolio literally have five minutes or less. Sometimes they're only looking at your portfolio for two minutes. So be respectful of their time by not making it hard for them to get to the good stuff. Um, so I looked at a portfolio yesterday and uh, I recommended to the person uh, to have problem solution and impact, but go ahead and put that final prototype right at the top. Don't make me look, don't make me wade through all of the text just to get to the prototype. I want to see it now. 
don't make me wait. So be respectful, give them the good stuff. And then if they wanna see details, you can provide that as well. Um, that's a good way to get around the tweet rule that you brought up because that's annoying to have to keep everything so condensed that it's as long as a tweet. I don't think I could make that work. That being said though, you should choose your words carefully. If you can say something in two words instead of five and to be clear, then do that. Don't add extra words when you don't need to. And use words that are that are common. No need to show your, you know, command of the English language by using words that you would not hear in normal speech. Use words that people say when they're having a conversation with you to show that you can have a conversation. Um, definitely feature your case studies on your homepage so that we can see that you have them. Sometimes, sometimes you'll have work that isn't in a case study. So just feature those case studies. Please make sure your website is responsive. Um, you know, you might have people looking at your portfolio from their phone or maybe from their tablet. So make sure that they can see it and test on those devices as well. Don't assume that it's gonna look okay. So make sure that you test it. And another thing that I, I have noticed with some portfolios is that it take a long time to load. So performance matters. If you're having to wait more than five seconds for a portfolio to load, then there's a, an issue. And you might need to take a look at the size of the images on the site or whatever slowing things down because it's irritating to me to have to wait. So I don't want you guys to lose out on a job opportunity because some hiring manager didn't want to wait 10 seconds for your portfolio to come up. So and they'll, they'll just stop looking. So make sure that you look for the performance stuff as well. What questions do you all have? I need tips on further figuring out how to get the website to speed up. I mean, besides, you know, I've already made sure that my pictures are small files and that sort of thing, but I don't know if there's any plugins or any, I've got a regular site of any other things I can be doing to make it quicker. What, tell me, tell me what your site is on again. Um, Thendorable.com. So it's just a regular site. So it's not, it's not on a hosted CMS or anything like that. No. Where is it hosted? Um, Bluehost. Okay, so what you can do is you can look at the, the host itself and see if they have like a faster tier plan. Sometimes shared hosts like Bluehost, um, if you're on the lowest plan, usually the cheapest plan, uh, they've, it's, I, I think of hosting, it's like apartments, okay? So uh, you have luxury apartments where you have a large apartment and just a few people, that's like your luxury, right? And then you have uh, all the way like in between and then going down to tenement housing where the server is literally so full of sites that nobody can move. That's what a lot of the cheap hosts do is they put so many sites on a server. So it might not be your site. It might be the fact that you're, it's just overcrowded and you might have like a noisy neighbor that is making a ruckus and is causing your performance to go down because they're taking up all the bandwidth on the server. So one thing you could do is you can upgrade your hosting or work with them to see if there's a, no, a noisy neighbor happening. Um, Bluehost is usually not too bad. If it's a WordPress site and it's like on the, their WordPress managed tier, it tends to be a little bit faster. But if it's like an HTML site that's on like the super cheap, um, it can really slow things down. GoDaddy is the worst host I've ever worked with. They are so horrible. I never recommend them to clients. And then when clients are like, why is my site so slow? And I'm like, because you went with GoDaddy and I told you not to. I don't know why you did that. <laughs> so uh, so no, not all hosts are created equal. Uh, that doesn't mean that you have to spend a ton of money. You might just need to look at it and see what, what's happening there. And I would, you know, you might need to switch it over. There's some, um, if it's a WordPress site, WP Engine tends to be pretty fast, although they're more expensive. So you kind of have to weigh that, what you want to do. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions when it comes to... You have a fav do you have a favorite um, platform for portfolios like UX Folio or Squarespace? I really don't. I think so. I, I try to be agnostic when it comes to that because I want you, I think you need to choose one that has 
a template that you can, you know, customize or work with that you feel most comfortable with, you know, because some people really love Wix and because they're very used to it. And I think it's important to be on a platform that you enjoy getting into. Um, so I think Wix is a good one, Squarespace. Um, I've heard mixed stuff about UX Folio. Um, some people really love it. Some people aren't that impressed. Um, I know some people that put it on Behance, some people that put it on Adobe Portfolio. <laughs> um, where are some others that I'm thinking of? Webflow. Uh, Webflow, I was about to say. Some people really like Webflow. Um, and, you know, especially if you want to do your own coding, that's a great place to kind of dive in and do it. Um, I have pretty consistently heard that Wix, Wix has like something similar. Uh, what's it called? Xcode. That's not Editor Xcode. X. Editor X. Edit that they, most people I've talked to hate it. They say it's really buggy. It's not worth it. Don't do it. <laughs> So, uh, I tried it. it's not good. It's not good. Yep. Not good. Don't you don't go with Editor X, <laughs> at least not now. So it's like what Adobe XD was when it first came out. No, very bad. Can I say something? Yes. It's a webflow gone wrong. <laughs> That's what I would say. Yeah. <laughs> it's a webflow gone wrong. Um, mine's on WordPress because I'm so used to WordPress. I like a self-hosted WordPress. I don't like hosted WordPress, but some people are down with that. That's kind of up to your preference. Thank you. Kashia. Yeah. Um, so I just had a question about the layout. Like when you're 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 as a recruiter, you're looking for our process and stuff, but do we literally just write the words like of our process or we're supposed to show that in our design without being like super obvious? I have seen uh, I have seen great case studies that literally have a section called process. And then okay. they might have it like laid out, like, you know, if it was the design thinking process, you know, it's uh, empathy okay. and, and like, you can even click through the different sections to see what they did. So um, I've seen clever, I've seen people try to be clever and honestly, it's much better to be uh, clear. Just super way. like lay it out where you can see it and it's not, it's obvious basically. Yep. Okay. Use Thank common you. terminology. Yep. Okay. Jessica. Yeah. <laughs> Jessica. Oh, sorry. I had to unmute myself. I actually just ha uh, had a question. I don't really know how to phrase it, but I've seen a lot of portfolios and examples of portfolios where people were working on, um, you know, projects where they weren't really able to share that much about the project because of like non-disclosure agreements, but they still kind of put something on their portfolio about it anyway. So I was wondering, is there like a set, like, like, is there a certain number, like, is there amount of criteria that you should take into consideration about what you can share before you even bother posting it? Like, if you can share like X, Y, Z, then maybe it's still a good idea to put on your portfolio or not, I guess is what I was looking for. But um, this is a really good question. I've seen it solved in a couple, in a several different ways. Um, one, always talk to whoever you need to, to find out how much you can share. Um, because that will help a lot with determining like what you can um, for I've seen people where they've kind of almost white labeled it a little bit like they've taken out like the critical details and like replaced logos and details in the on the wireframes just to be able to show what they did so that it's more it's focused on the process and less about what the what it actually like the content of it was so that's one way to handle it I have seen where uh, people have like maybe done a little bit of an executive summary, but explained that this is, it was a non-disclosure agreement, so they can't share a whole lot, but then they have like a link that, you know, a recruiter could ask for a password in order to see more details. Like they've worked that out with either the employer or whoever it is they were working with. Um, and then I've also seen where they just left that off entirely, but when they went for the interview, they shared those in like a PDF form or a, a deck because they weren't making it public. So there's a, a few different ways. I, it's difficult. I don't know if anybody here in the group has ever had that, like a non-disclosure agreement that prevented them from putting details on their portfolio. Yes, I I, I actually have. I, yeah. we recently, I... Um, because I, I freelanced with the, um, so just real quick, I, I freelanced with a, a startup 
Mm -hmm. And um, I, I did ask the product manager if we could put it, because it's a learning experience for me, that freelance gig, and if I could put it on my portfolio, but um, I have to figure out how to white box it in a way, <laughs> because I signed a non-disclosure agreement, so. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough when it comes to NBAs <laughs> and like what to share and whatnot. I, yeah. I have a project that I wanted to put on our company website that we were working on. And I couldn't, I couldn't put anything. I wasn't allowed to. So every single deal that I do, I, I have that in my contract now <laughs> that I can put it in my portfolio. Uh, and then I just negotiate if they like protest it. But um, generally I try to protect as much. I'll, I'll put it on there and then just take names off if I have to, or be very vague about it. But I, be, I can get into the nitty gritties of the details at least, you know. Uh, oh, is it James? I see you, your hand up. Um, I, was, I was curious about the feature case studies. I didn't quite catch everything there. So was it just, I, I couldn't quite catch like what exactly was the main point of that slide point, sorry. So that's like to make sure that like on your homepage you are showcasing like some case studies and not just like any kind of like visual look of like, okay, look at my pretty design that I did. So make sure that you're featuring case studies oh, okay. on the homepage. Okay. Um, okay. It seems pretty basic and I'm sure you guys are all knew that, um, but that was something that I took away from the Google course that they brought up as being really important. Cause I guess that's something that most people don't think of is to even put a case sense. study on there. That makes sense. Yeah. What other questions do you all have? Well, let's, um, if you don't have any questions, then let's review a portfolio. Would anybody like to be the person who is reviewed today? I'm happy to. Callie. Oh, I don't even have yours up. What is it? Callie. It's just calliemusic.com. Okay. Bringing it up. I just finished, so I'm very open to any and all feedback well first of all congrats on just finishing that's great so Thank i remember <laughs> I, I remember like you're like i don't have my portfolio yet i know um okay so um one i already have a little bit of your personality and what your interest is just from your image so you're definitely showcasing a brand i think that's great um and looking at the top your navigation is simple um and easy to read i like that too and I'm gonna inspect it. What did you build it in? Squarespace, just because oh. I used that, but I didn't love the process. They, uh, it's not very easy to customize anymore. So let's see, we've got, let's do the iPhone. Just making sure that it looks good. There might be some, a little bit of tweaking you might need to do to just make this a little bit, but I don't see it. I think it's like a deal breaker here. Mm -hmm. Nice. Got a little bit of animation going. I see your case studies. We'll go back to the normal view. I like the dark background. I usually see a white background, so I really like the dark. So the aesthetic is appealing to me. Uh, the text might be a little small on some screens, depending, like this is my big 4K screen. Mm -hmm. Just keep that in mind. Um, and it's hard to see, It's it. I can see that you have a bolded uh, text here, but since it's small, it's hard. It doesn't distinguish it enough against the other text. But I like the fact that you're bolding key phrases. I see you have your work. Oh, look at that. That's such a great case study. So is this a, so how much of this case study do you have? Is it just the UI design? Yes. Yeah. I focused on the UI design for that one and just kind of explained it was like a handoff situation. Cool. Oh, and I love that you have recommendations. What a great idea. Just added that today. Thanks. I like the say hello at the bottom. That looks good. All right. Let's go into one of your projects. Go into your full on case study. Nice design. This looks good. 
And I like that you're showing the final product at the very top. So is this an image right here? Yes. Yep. That the the mock-up is an image on that background that's like the cross colors. Is there an H1 on the page? Um, I might have used H2. All right, really. so make sure you get an H1 in here somewhere. Um, okay. You want to demonstrate that you kind of understand that an H1 is the most important on the page. That's just my, that, so again, take it with a grain of salt. You don't have yeah. to do it. My recommendation is to have an H1. I like that you have the overview here with some a snapshot of like what you did, your tools and timeline. Um, you might want to add your team here because I know you had a team with you. Okay, cool. Like by name, like call everyone out? Maybe not. You could do role. I could be role or name. It's up to you. Okay. okay. Um, but just showcase that you worked in a team. I think that's really important. Okay. Yeah, I have that in my first sentence, but maybe just like bring Oh, I see four other. Time. Yeah. Because I, I'm not going to lie. Out. I totally like, oh, nice. I'm going to move on. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm so scanning. I'm yeah. a scanner. <laughs> cool. Like it, you had the process here and the problem, your solution. One thing you might think about, oh, I like that you have explore the prototype. If you have space to put like a little GIF or something, that might be something that you put here. I personally would move your process down. That's just, okay. you know, I would move problem and solution up and put process below and then dive into it. Because to me, that kind of makes sense. That makes sense, yeah. It feels like this, this block of text seems really close together. It's kind of mm -hmm. making the readability a little bit more difficult. Um, since your product is so cool, you might want to highlight this stuff a little bit more. You know, okay. like, I don't know if you want to break it out with like icons and um, explain like, like all the really cool features of it. But I, I, this, if you guys haven't seen, this project is awesome. This is one of my, one of my favorite projects that Kelly worked on. I like that you're, these are really big and I like that you can look at it. It still seems, it's a little hard to read all the words here. So yeah. like, even though it's, comes up big it's still hard to see so you might want to you know maybe have like a little like call out on some of the most important you okay. know things that are pulled in there mm -hmm. I like that you have the link to your Miro board yeah I like this graphic that shows your insights from your survey and your persona. So I guess like a question for you already, this is feeling like long to scroll through. Does this seem like a really long, does it seem like there's like too much in here? I'd use more headings, make it really scannable. Okay. I, I, I can see your slide deck coming out too but that's just me like because mm -hmm. I, I knew like what your slide deck looked like yeah I I would just make it just really scannable just like keep me like this is ideation this is definition this is design you know, like just keep me rolling through telling the story mm -hmm. use like a you know, headings to kind of draw me in. The going back and forth between the columns might be a little bit confusing. What I would do is I would test this and see if people can get the feel for the project. Like go in and have people actually look at it and have them tell you, what is this project about? That's why I like the executive summary at the top, problem, solution, impact. Then they, people can go into the details because sometimes details are really important and some people won't look at it, but some people mm. will. They'll go through and they'll look at all your assets and your deliverables and be like, oh, wow. 
So, I mean, this is where I wanted to get to. So another thing you could do is right up here at the top with the process, like have your, like instead of using an image, have this be like HTML text that can jump to each section. Mm -hmm. So you have like a whole section all on empathize, a whole section on definition. And that way I can click on it and go right to maybe what I care about, which is your sketches. You know, because I, I want to see that. Squarespace, I think I need to get off Squarespace. I don't think it's like so hard to add like those small details like that I'm finding, but that makes a lot more sense and would make it so much more usable. I, I needed, I, there was a portfolio I saw that was just awesome. And I can, I don't remember what it was because I saw it in some um, event I was at and it was just so cool. It had the things at the top and it was like a navigation. It was like a sub navigation. And as you scroll, you, you would scroll down and you saw like a horizontal navigation. And as you kept scrolling down, it went up and it stayed there and you could just click on it and it would just switch it. It was just really cool how, how they had put it together. Um, I would talk about your why here a little bit more. This was your jam here and figuring out your UI and the styles, like why? Why was it important to choose lush greens? Why was it important you know, to do that? What is, is there a personality behind it? Was there a brand archetype? You know, Cause that's something that is one of your strengths and something that you could really highlight here. Okay. So I like the images here with showing how things move through. And I really like when you, where you have the information here about what you did and how you changed it. Be careful about centered text. Some mm -hmm. of your text is left aligned. Some of your text is centered. I personally hate centered text. It's really hard to read. I kind of want to click on it. So you should have your, you can embed a prototype, can't you? Like a Figma prototype? Yes. Yeah. I think I did that in one of my other ones, but I could do that here too. Yeah. That'd be cool. Mm -hmm. um, you might also have um, more about lesson, like say lessons learned, like at the end. So people know that you learned all the way throughout. Just be really explicit. <laughs> okay. Some people need their hands held. <clears throat> Very nice. Thank you. That was really helpful. Yeah, we, can we all give like snaps and claps to Callie for being our guinea pig here? Nicely done, Callie. Who else would love us to like rave over your portfolio? Hey. James. Oh. James called it first. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I had his up too. <laughs> oh, sick. All right. All right, James. Uh, Oh boy. I'm looking. Nervous. We're gonna see, is it responsive? Looks like it. What is this? Let's scroll down. This is cool. I like your fonts. Oh, thanks. I spent way too much time on that. What, what platform is this on? Webflow. You did a good job. Webflow <clears throat> can be tricky. Thanks. Yeah, I was lucky where I had a, I worked at an agency and we did a bunch of sites on it that I had to like actually ship so I got like paid practice basically yeah I I, okay. I can see right away what you want to do and I think that's great so you've done a great job of showcasing and you're using typography to showcase your personal <laughs> brand I think that's great so I like this little statement at the very top um, and I like that little button because that was just neat I like the little details I really like how you've put together your case studies here in this format. Don't typically see that, but I really like how you've broken it out into a goal and your role. And then you have a screenshot of what it is. So that really helps tell me. And I see you have a, is this a stock image with the app? Yeah, yeah. I've, I've seen that done poorly, so, but I don't <laughs> hate this. Okay, I'm like, okay. how cringy is it? <laughs> I, 
I, I've seen other <clears throat> stock images. So I like creativeness with, I, I like to see what it is. Um, so that's good. This one, um, doesn't. Yeah, this yeah. one is not doing it for me. You guys yeah. show me like the, the, the website in action or something like yeah. that. You know, maybe put this on a screen sure. <laughs> or sure. something like that. Yeah. I don't know. Am I wrong? What do you guys think? Yeah, Abby's I, I, nodding. Lisa, what about you? Yeah, that the website one, maybe instead of just a picture, like show the first page of the website where, where it has headings. So then maybe they'll know, people will know, oh, that's the front. That's like the, the main page of the website that you, you redesigned. Okay. Is that like, I don't know. <laughs> that's yeah, just I my thought. So. So otherwise, I thought maybe you were doing this could lead me to think it's all sorts of things because the image, <laughs> yeah. the image drives my eye before yeah. the, the heading. So right. I had to 100%. do a double take. Um, I almost always let me go scroll down. Ooh, I like that you have the what I do. Very nice with the graphic here. This is a this is a nice portfolio that has a very consistent brand and it's very well done. I'm gonna click on your case study all right health platform redesign you can get to the prototype and it looks like you have the final right here mm -hmm. problem role so again maybe put the summary here problem solution impact okay. and maybe more like a snapshot of uh tools, timeline, those are all helpful to see. Um, and then you could have like something about like, go, now we're diving into the process, however you want to do it, um, okay. where you kick into the understanding the user here. Okay. And yeah, how, as long as, as far as you go, like, you know, just try to make sure that it's clear where we are in the process. Okay. So this was a week long project? No. Yeah, a week and a half. Wow. I just redesigned like the main feature in the dashboard. Nice. Um, yeah. How long for, <clears throat> so it was pretty, it was speedy. Yeah, that was the whole thing. So, so what is this button? So this was just the snapshot of it and then you can yep. view the fill case study. Yep. And then that is a, um, a slide, slide deck, um, keynote, that's what the word is, of like the just full blown like 20 pages each project or 20 uh, slides each project. So don't feel any pressure to go too deep, but. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm curious what you think about that. I idea. really, I really like it. I kind of want to see this in the, in HTML. Okay. Cause I'm lazy and I kind of like, you know, that's an extra step. Yeah. But that's just me. That's subjective, right? Like you need to hear that from a lot of people before you necessarily yeah. make a change. I don't hate this. Okay. My um, thought was it's like a micro commitment. So it's like another, you know, I don't know. <laughs> this is beautiful. Thank you. But I kind of want to see it on the page, on the, on the HTML. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. And then also have the takeaway. You know what you could do? You could get people to leave their email so they can get to the pretty one too and download thought, it. <laughs> you could totally thought, make some money off of this. I totally uh, did the the email thing at first. Like, if you want to see the full thing, give me your email so I can follow up with them. And then did you really? I was, I was just joking. Yeah. And then I was like, <laughs> I'm not hearing back from anyone. And then I asked oh. a couple people about it, and they were like, just put it, just like put a link in there. Yeah. No, you yeah, just wanted right. to put that a link. Was, that was awkward. <laughs> <clears throat> it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. It really is. This is something you can definitely ha still have. Um, and also have it to like as a leave behind when you, you know, go on an interview. Um, but I do like seeing the whole thing. Like, so you could maybe have a separate page 
that people go to. But I personally, I think that that step is sometimes too much. Just have the thing at the top and be like, yo, if you want to leave, go. But if you want to keep reading, here you go. Yeah. And just go into it because this is very easy to follow the way that you have it structured. Okay. I think it was mainly the, it was just a workaround because it was like tough to do all the arrows and stuff like that and be responsive. Like I was yeah. having a hard time doing that kind of storytelling. So that's why I opted for this. Yeah. These, these graphics are difficult. You might have to adjust it. That's why I'm saying like, keep this, okay. you can still have okay. this as a downloadable but also have it where people can see all of the details and you can just do larger images that okay. include the arrow so that right. it doesn't move around. Gotcha. Okay. I mean, am I wrong? You guys think that this is beautiful? It's gorgeous, right? I mean, it's really pretty. I'd hire you. Sick. Uh, I would just make sure that that opens in a new tab. James, so that when oh, I click right. on it, it doesn't take me away from your portfolio. Sure, sure. Okay, that's that's great. Agreed. This is a okay. this is a really nice. Yeah, I would. Here's my process. This is what I did, and then maybe have a separate section. You can even do it underneath. Just have them, you know, like keep reading, but if they, you know, want to go and come back later, they can just download the the PDF. Okay, so like download the full PDF or keep scrolling. Like if you'd want to read now, save for later, basically. Yeah, or if they just okay. want to, you know, look at it in a different form. Okay. I like giving people multiple options. I don't have a problem with having yeah. structured the top part, really. I mean, okay. you might make a few small tweaks so okay. that I don't think that I'm going into like an in-depth thing. And then all of a sudden, oh, there's more. Yeah. Um, so that was, kind of, that was kind of the thing here. I thought I was going in okay. depth starting here, but oh no, we're not. So be careful of that. You might take out like yeah. the user part, include, here was my process. These were some takeaways, some lessons learned and here are the details. Boom, okay. go into that. Okay. I wanna hear from Devin or Sandy. What are your thoughts? I really like it. Um, first of all, there's a lot of white space, so it's not too much clutter. So we can clearly read what's in there. So I really like the format. And I like that black on the left side with the text on the right. So you just focused on that. And so you have a good contrast going on. I really like that contrast. And yes, I do agree that design process, you have your problem solution on top and then you have your process going down. So yeah, and the key takeaways, that was the first time I saw the key takeaways on top too. So usually they put that at the bottom. It's a good thought. Yeah, I, like, I that. like it. I really do. Yeah, great job, James. Thank you. Yeah, James, I think you did a solid job here. Um, I really like the aesthetic, the color scheme that you got going here. Um, I think if I had to do a grow, um, Cindy, could you scroll down a little mm -hmm. bit further? Mm -hmm. I think the only thing that kind of is this, is this an image with Michelle right here? Yeah. And then if you keep scrolling, <clears throat> this image right here, your process. Yeah. That's an image too. Yep. I just feel like the, the size, and this is real, real nitpicky, but I just feel like the, the font size kind of like shifts uh dramatically between those two images i just think it throws mm. me off just a tad um oh, but that's really. that's getting really knit gritty that's how how much i like oh. <laughs> hey, yeah that's... no i think you're i think you're moving in the right direction but um that's that's great thank you I see danielle you have your hand raised yeah, so I have two questions. One is for James, and I'm wondering if, James, I'm wondering if you've interviewed with this portfolio, um, and if you pull up that PDF, because it, it is super nice. And then I guess 
my question for Cindy later on that kind of ties in is I've heard a lot about um, like online portfolios and offline portfolios, um, mainly being offline portfolios to help you walk through the process a little bit better when you're interviewing. Uh, so yeah, I guess I'll start with James or my question for James. Yeah, it, I think the question was like, have I interviewed with it? I, I definitely have. I mean, what I've noticed is most of the time they just pull it up while they're talking to me and they'll pull up my website and then they click on it. Um, and do you have them pull up the PDF part? In they usually just do. They usually oh, okay. just like click on it and they'll be like opening up and they'll take a look at it. Sometimes they don't. Um, but a lot of times I'll, I'll pull it up and share and they'll be like, oh yeah, I remember looking at this. Um, so most people have done that. I really tried to make it obvious um, um, aesthetically on the bottom, just to try and draw your attention towards it um, and make that work. But yeah, I mean, I, I think the only thing with interviewing it with it is that like, I don't have anything more to add and that might be a, a con, um, but also like, it's like, I think it is like 20 slides per case study, at least one of them, I think goes a little over that. So it was like, um, at that point, I guess I could write a book, but that's just me. Words, words are hard for me. So this took a lot of time <laughs> for me to like get it all out. It um, looks really does that good help? Though. Does that yeah, help? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and your question for me was about online versus offline. Portfolios. Yeah, or both. Um, and just like the benefit or like. Yeah, I guess the benefit or do you feel like it's necessary or. Um, um, so for sure the online, because that is doing your work, it's marketing for you without you being there. Uh, the, the, the offline one, when you're ser searching for a job, I've seen it where that has a lot of detail. Maybe that's tailored for you to showcase when you're face-to-face -face with a hiring manager where you can stay on track. It's a little bit, it seems a little bit more professional in a way. It's almost like a slide presentation that you have. Um, I, When I've used an offline portfolio, um, it's been for case studies that I can't put on the web <laughs> uh you know like maybe I had an NDA and I'm showcasing something that isn't really something that I can just put out there publicly and I am going to share it just with specific people um, I've also used it maybe because I wanted to have a leave behind of you know just a snapshot that someone keeps on their desk but I use it in a slightly different way since it's usually for my company um, or for like projects that I've worked on with my team but yeah, when I've seen, sense. yeah, when I've seen that uh, offline, um, it's usually for, it's almost like a, it's a, almost like a slide deck that you're, you're going to be presenting when you have to do like a case study presentation. I've seen people present case studies um, like, like this, like go through their project online and scroll and it just seems awkward. So I think honestly, the offline portfolio is way better to present to a hiring manager, either on a Zoom call or in person, because it seems more tailored to them. And you can really focus in on, the, on giving a presentation about it as you go through. But again, that that's just how I've seen it done. I don't think there's an industry standard unless somebody has seen that or has an opinion on that. Yeah, it's the wild, wild west out there. So everybody's doing things differently. I got in an argument uh, at one point with some students from Micah's program uh, because they had been told from one instructor about offline portfolios and case studies and playbooks and, and all these things. And then a different instructor had told them something different and they were like arguing with me about it. And I'm like, I can't fix the a confusion that you have from two different instructors. I can only tell you what I've seen. <laughs> so I am sorry that I cannot fix your frustration. Okay, I wanna make sure we have time for our activity tonight. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and split us up into three breakout rooms. 
Uh, we may not have reciprocity ring in person tonight. We may just have to do it um, on the Slack channel because I want to make sure that we give this some meat. Okay. So what I want you to do is uh, if you're not comfortable presenting your portfolio, that's totally fine. You don't have to go. I'm not going to force anybody to bring up their portfolio and get feedback if you're not comfortable. However, you're not going to get the benefit of the group <laughs> unless you do. So pick one, one person in the room uh, to go first. Sandy, Devin, and I will be in each room. Um, and, and yeah, I will pull up your portfolio. We'll share. I want everybody, I want everybody in the room to give a glow. And if you see something that you think you can give a grow on, maybe one or two, that would be great too. Um, we can't go too long. We make, want to make sure we get to everybody. So only spend, I wouldn't even spend 10 minutes since we're going to have bigger groups. So spend a little bit less time, give some actionable feedback to that person. Okay. So let me go ahead and make breakout rooms. I'm going to make three. They will be automatically assigned. But we'll have about nine to 10 people in each group. So we got to go fast. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to get this 24 minutes. Um, Devin and Sandy, let's make sure that we're all going to different rooms. So don't go anywhere yet. Um, all right, go ahead and open up. All right, Sandy, looks like you're in room two. Devin, which room did you get? Room you got two, room two. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and send you to room one. And I will go to room three. Hello. Hey. OK, cool. Room three. Room three. Woo. OK, <laughs> who, who wants to go first? I'll guinea pig. All right, Elliot. Uh, let's see. Let's do this in Slack. Can you share your portfolio if you haven't already done so? Oh, yeah. I think I did it last week when I realized cool. there was a homework channel. Do you just want me to dump it into the homework channel? Yes, please. OK. Be easy to pull it up then. And everybody else who's going to go, go ahead and put it in the homework channel real quick. That way we can just click on it and I'll share okay. my screen. Elliot. Do you get people saying Elliot? Definitely yeah. when I was growing up. <laughs> <laughs> Generationally, it has gone down. Yeah. I, <laughs> but all of my junior high girlfriends' moms love to do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, my son... My son was, uh, you know, his name is Luke. They go, Luke, I yeah. am your father. Okay, uh, Elliot, I, I already really like your aesthetic. Of course, aesthetics, you know, they're, they're going to be completely, uh, uh, you know, subjective. So take that with a grain of salt. But I really like how you're already establishing who you are. And I love the that you have a statement right here of what you're doing. Okay, so that that's great. Um, your navigation looks simple. Um, what do you have? What program is this that you have your portfolio on? That is Webflow. Nice. It looks really nice. I'm also a Webflow evangelist. Looks very good. I like Link you have below. a little bit of. Looks good. So it's responsive. That's great. Okay. So you've got your projects. So you're featuring your case studies. Well done there. I like how you're showcasing it. So you're showing it like in situ, I guess that's the word. So I can see honestly that you've kind of got a mix. You've got responsive web design, but you've also got some apps. So that gives me a, a, a good feel for the types of work that you're doing. Ooh, and there's more oil paintings. Nice. So I like, now I, I totally want to view the artwork, but I need to go back up to the case. <laughs> um, so I found out that I'm not alone. I don't know how many other designers do this, but uh, myself and Will Needham, we both click on the first one. So yeah, just so I think you know. That that's like a rule, right? <laughs> well, I don't know why does. we do it. I just I'm like, that's what I'm going to click on every single time is your first one. Um, yeah, I don't remember what his reason was. Mine was like, because I want to see, is this really your best one? Um, so I... 
Uh, the first thing I see here is I just see the logo, which isn't telling me much. Your first picture on the homepage told me a lot more. Mm -hmm. So don't be afraid to put some sort of picture up at the top of the final product. I think that, so this, uh, as a caveat, this um, is for a project that is not finished, but was such a big project and was all I was talking about in my interviews. So I figured I needed to get something up now. So, so wait, I think you have high fives though? I do have high fives, but I think when I did it, I didn't have high fives. So I think it was just a question of update. Like, I think I made that cover image that you liked on the front page. I think I did that after I did this and I just myth forgot. Okay. Yeah. Get that in there. Yes. Um, like I, I'm a scanner. I read a little bit. One thing you can do for people like me that have like very low attention <laughs> spans is bold things you want me to see in body mm -hmm. copy. So bold key phrases or keywords. So, um, you know, if you say team of, you know, and then have like some of these, so I know, oh, he worked in a team. That's very helpful. Sure. Um, da, 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 da. So your challenge, your approach, your timeline, your tools, and then you go into your process, looks like. Yeah. So you have, and how long is your sprint? Oh, you had two weeks? Uh, they're four two-week sprints. Okay. Oh, I'm seeing that here. Okay, eight weeks, four two-week sprints. So sprint one research, two did a survey. You might put in some additional headings here, mm -hmm. you know? So just to give a little bit more variety, like a slightly smaller headline here, research. So you did survey, then you analyze the survey, uh, which led you to focus on some user groups. So it looks like you've got, is this a proto persona or a user persona? There's a two proper personas. Okay, so on your images, um, it's great that you have the link to the survey, but you can also label what it is. Make sure you label images because for people that are moving fast and not necessarily reading the text, they might yeah. miss what it is. So like you have like a little diagram here where you've analyzed, synthesized the data. So just put that. Would that bolding, would that fix that? That's what I did in my other case studies usually. You can definitely bold it, but I always recommend labels under images. So just more headings to just break it up. Totally make it as scannable as you can. Cool. Okay, I know we need to go into the next person, so I'm gonna scan quickly. Yeah, I love your images. I love that you can make them big. That's really good. Keep going. Okay, uh, definitely add lessons learned and next steps. Like you can talk about the fact that it was in pro progress, that uh, it's still not built yet, you know, whatever it is you need to do. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. Thank you. Thank All you. Right. All right. Who's next? I can go next. Let's see. Serby. Serby. Yeah. I had to move Slack. I'll put it Slack in. in front Are we going to do it like glows and grows or anything? Oh, or? yes, you're right. Okay. Okay. We'll do lightning round. All right, everybody give a glow. Ready? <laughs> Who wants to go first? Oh, All right, Billy. Um, I, at the, the beginning of the site, I love your use of, of uh, visuals. It's clear that you have like a good sense of, of uh, both visual design and hierarchy. Uh, like the, the way that the logo is the E and the B, the way that those double L's are all lined up, the color, the, the uh, well hello is offset. Uh, the visual hierarchy, like on the text where your case studies is, you have case studies are, you have that uh, big bold uh, font at the top for the title, and then you have a smaller font and then below that smaller font for the button. So I like that. Um, Thank you. Yeah, yeah. All right, who's next? I'll go. go for um, it. So um, I was checking it out um, just for a second as well, I checked out um, the the road. Um, oh yeah, yeah, the midway up? one. Yeah, um, so I checked that out. Um, I I love how you presented this. I love that there's different colors, um, like navigation. All the buttons are super easy to get to. Yeah, uh, if yeah, if you could click on that. Um, I was curious. I felt like just like it looked super cool to have like the app kind of all on its side and stuff. But I also felt like if I was just rushing through a portfolio, I'd be like, okay, that's making it hard for me to like kind of see it. 
Yeah, the head uh, tilt thing. Yeah, so I was like, um, that's kind of like my thought. But at yeah. the same time, if somebody's <laughs> just looking like, okay, well, general idea, um, that might work. Um, yes. And then I think another thing was like, you just have like research um, like down below. And then like on the bottom, you said like conclusion. So I think like your head, your um, headlines or whatever, it could, could just be a little bit more problem oriented um and just like kind of storytelling and stuff because it's like design and, and prototype but i think it could be more about the problem that you're trying to solve yeah um so that it's a little bit more engaging as far as storytelling so i don't know take that no, with that's a, a good salt, tip but... i've never heard that before it would make sense to do that yeah you can use yeah. subheads too yeah yeah that would yeah just was, more guess... heading more 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 variety so it's not as like a uh, luxury yeah, scannability is going to yeah. be really helpful. Yeah. Thank you, guys. You bet. Appreciate it. All right, we're we ready to go on to Serbis. All right, Serbi. Oh, you got a little icon. Cute. So they've done a great job of explaining what you do right up top. I love that. Um, what platform are you using here? Squarespace. Squarespace, you liking it? Oh, uh, honestly, not much. I can't <laughs> do much of the customization here. Yeah, when, so sometimes uh, text doesn't show up exactly as you want it and it looks like it's kind of yeah. messing up here. So you might want to take a look at that just to make sure that it's completely readable. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's- I recently um, changed the font size. I think that's the problem. I haven't checked it after that. Yeah, it might be the line height because mm -hmm, so it yeah. flips down just yeah. for this particular one. Um, this could be, you could make this a little bit bigger because this is really huge and this seems smaller. So um, you might make this particular one like a special heading mm -hmm. where you say hello. Um, but super, super easy to, to see navigation. This reminds me, this reminds me of some of the, the Google um, portfolios I saw where they have a very nice clean white background and the creative projects are right there top of the fold that's really important <laughs> yeah yeah and so and they love the icons too I've seen that all over the place um, okay so I like how you have your your projects here and then some ongoing projects are these the like ones that you're in the middle of but you haven't finished yeah, so this are some freelance project that I'm working on right now and the above which is there, those are just the passion project part of my certification course. Mm -hmm. so. so you might put a little note that says link coming soon or not done just because people might be like, why can't I click on it? Why do okay. you include it if I can't click on it, you know? something okay. to think so, about uh, okay that was my question as well uh, I have an NDA signed for one of the projects like the touche one I don't think I can include anything because they strictly asked me not to put it, any of the information because it's a startup kind of thing so can I just include a note and leave it as it is or should I completely remove it from here I I would I would try to add a note that it is under an NDA and you're limited in, in sharing information, uh, mm -hmm. but that you can talk through it. Like maybe you can have like a slide deck that you can share with a hiring manager. Um, so, you know, what kills me about NDAs is that these startups, they all want you to sign an NDA and honestly, their ideas, nobody's gonna steal. Because if you have to, if if you have to sign an NDA, it usually means that they they're completely clueless as to how much time and effort it takes to actually replicate the idea. <laughs> so, but anyway, that's why I'm like, sure, fine, I'll sign an NDA. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so they're just afraid someone's going to spend five years trying to replicate their same idea of yes. blood, sweat, and tears. Right, but you know, like anybody can figure it out. <laughs> honestly but anyway that's what i would do is try try with a link like some sort of like you know this is proprietary i'm not able to share uh publicly 
um, but I can talk about the details or, you know, you, you can at least explain that. Yeah. I've seen some people put uh, NDA stuff behind a password so that only certain people can see it. I think it's going to depend on your NDA mm -hmm. of how you can do that and what you can protect. Yeah. So you might just do a, um, a slide deck and just say, I can present this in a, in a, in, you know, interview or something like that. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, let me just click on one of these. And was this through uh, your program? Yeah. Cool. Um, I like seeing the big banner image at the top that kind of gives me an idea for what you designed. Um, I almost missed the role part and the tools. I'm sorry about the dog. I like how you have problems and goals right here. And I love the quote right at the top. Who, who's, who said this quote though? Is that a user? Was it from your user research? Yeah, one of the user mentioned, but it's also at the Google, like, so. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you could just attribute it to like user or something okay. like that, just so I know who it came from. Okay, yeah. Um, I love this graphic that you have for your process. That's great. Um, if you wanted to level it up, uh, you could um, maybe have something clickable here. So if I click on it, it just kind of scrolls immediately to what that section is. Okay. Um, that way I can just like click on your design and go all the way down. Mm -hmm. um, I think you did a great job of like making this very scannable with your questions. Um, if you guys see something that you want to comment on, feel free to jump in. That's a great graphic. If you can make the images like larger when they're smaller like this, you know, like have it open up in like a light box, that would be great. Okay. Yeah, especially um, like even these large ones, um, I almost wanna look at it and examine it more, even more closely to see some people like me have old eyes. So it's hard to see stuff. I like how you've clearly labeled. You might need to put some explanation around the information architecture here. Okay. Um, I see a lot of like what you did. It might be good to look at it and see if there's a way to add why. Like, you know, as a result of defining the customer journey, what, what opportunities specifically did you find and what did you want to focus on? Mm -hmm. um, so I can see, you know, you have a better idea for how the user feels and like, what their journey is, but like specifically like call out, like, you know, one of the things I noticed was there needs to be an increase in transparency. So I really wanted to focus on this particular part of the user journey. So that story tells me more about your thought process and helps guide me through, and that helps bring a story to your overall process with it. So try to make sure that wherever you're saying what you did, is there a way to also explain why you did the thing that you did. Okay. Could, could she bring it back to those pain points that she had labeled up there? Like kind of bring those down? Yes. And yeah, whatever it is. Yeah, that's a perfect thing. You know, like noticing, uh, you know, some of the frustrations, you know, like one of them here, toys and clothes, just getting, you know, kind of covered in dust. You know, how that, how that links to the journey that you created about a specific process? Were there any frustrations? Like really help us understand why you created the information architecture the way you did. Is it gonna like help streamline the process of doing these things? Um, and then also how that ties into the, this, you know, the, the wireframes that you created. Okay, okay, yeah. Makes sense. Needed some testing. Did you do any sketches at all? Yes, I did. I love sketches. I'm a okay. huge fan of sketches. I can include that. And your high fidelity. Yeah, again, try to tell why. 
any, anything that you noticed, like why you decided to focus on things, but I like how you're calling out the things that you added, the skip button. That's great. The little mm -hmm. notations here are fantastic. This is great. And if you can, like, I love how you can link to Figma. And I love how you can also embed Figma now in websites. So that's a great way to show it as well. This looks good. All right, any other from the group? What do you like about it? What can Survey do to make it even better? I love the I love the pain points up top. That was like super great. Oh, like I said, I think it, to having that kind of is there a way that you can weave those like frustrations from the personas and these pain points throughout and kind of like you know pay homage to them, you know, as throughout the process. I was curious about like just the yellow on white. Um, how that is just kind of hard hard to read just like the, he the headings. Um, so for scannability, that might be a little bit. Okay, yeah. Hard, but I don't know if that's a testing thing, right? And I don't know if you've checked for accessibility on that, but. Yeah, you might other than that, to. I haven't Other checked. than that is like super clean and beautiful and um, I liked it. Thank you. Anybody else? Someone I haven't heard from? Grady, Gina, Catherine? Grady, you don't say anything. I haven't said anything. Um, I really like it. It's I'm pretty impressed by it. It's um, yeah, it's it's very well like laid out. Um, it's very organized, and I I like that. I think it makes it easy to follow. Definitely a good good portfolio. That any kind of feedback we give you would only be to level it up. I really think so. Well done. All right, how much time do we have left in the breakout room? Crazy lady is gonna make us finish soon, hold on. We have three minutes. Three minutes, okay, we got time. Who wants to go next? Gina. Speed, speed Wait, round. I know I've got yours up somewhere, don't I? Oh. Um, I just posted in the homework channel. Homework. Oh, there you are. Very nice. What, what's the platform? Um, WordPress with Elementor. Nice. Oh, I want to do mine with Elementor. That's what I've been looking at. Uh, I like your little animation here. And I like uh, the pop of color. You immediately tell us who you are. So that's great. Um, Colors are super yummy. Ooh. Thank you. Yeah, they're beautiful colors. Um, oh, I like you're really showing us like what you've got an app, you've got a website, and another app. It's great their website. So a nice diversity of your work, contact form at the bottom, simple navigation at the top. Let's click on the case study. Nice, you're showing us the image again. So consistency. Text might be a little bit small, just might it, something to think about. It looks a lot different on your screen. So this, it's, it's good to see it this way too. Yeah, my big my big screen makes things look really, really weird. Yeah, actually, I was going to tell that like when I see my portfolio at my screen, it looks very different than at your screen, it looks very different. So, yeah, I definitely check in lots and lots of different uh, scenarios as much as possible. Uh, for this one, um, oh, good, you've got a pop out where people can go to it. Oh, it's still really small on my screen. So you might want to test that and see, cause it's still hard for me to, like, I might be able to read it, but yeah, that you can also really show help. a screenshot or something like that, that could be bigger or maybe displayed in a slightly different way and then linked to the Google uh, sheet. Um, I, I would still do problem solution impact, have that executive summary at the top, then go into your process where you can go through your competitive analysis, your secondary research, 
your user survey, like all the all the the meat and potatoes here. Um, I like your cards, but the centered text is a little bit hard to read. Okay. There might be, you might want to like left align it with maybe like a little icon at the top, since I can tell you're trying to differentiate it from the other things. Subheadings, maybe. Yeah, maybe some subheadings or something. And maybe bold it because there's some really good insights that you have in here. Okay. Um, definitely like those personas get big. And I like your customer journey map, same thing here. Um, be sure to go through, read the text and make sure, oh, I like that, it allowed me to organize the required features into a logical app layout. Maybe go into details about like, you know, here's what I found. Like I, you know, needed to have things under a particular heading, like go into the why a little bit. Okay. I, I know everybody's going for brevity, but you got to give me a little bit of meat. Cool. And we're going to get called back in just a second. I like how you're going into some details here about the style tile and your aesthetic. I think it's pretty well organized. And if you can embed the prototype, that's even better. And we're back. All right, guys, did I know I, in my room, we didn't get through everyone, um, but that might be okay. Uh, Cause we can always like circle back later uh, tonight or set up a separate time, but I'd love to hear from some folks, some insights that you got from people that were looking at your portfolio, what is something that you took away from it? Maybe an action item. More subheadings. More subheadings, great. What else? A better homepage, like landing homepage with more information on me, not just my case studies. Okay, that's great and insight. What else? One more. Figuring out what I want to focus on to like really show the recruiter. That's a fantastic insight. That's awesome. Great. Um, so let me go ahead and tell you guys what I want you in terms of homework to do. Oh crap, I didn't make a slide for this. Hold on. Uh, what I want you to do for homework uh, for the next week is I want you to iterate as much as you are able to on your portfolio. I understand everybody's got busy schedules, but do your best to take the feedback that you got. Um, and if you haven't gotten any feedback, I'll stay a little bit later um, or we can set up separate portfolio reviews. Um, also, everybody's got um, portfolios that they shared in the homework channel. Go in and start giving feedback on Slack to people. I'll give it at least a one glow and a grow. Um, but take that feedback that you're getting, or in addition to that, what you're hearing from other people that you're learning from that you can integrate into your own, own portfolio, okay? And make some changes to it. Your portfolio is always gonna be a work in progress. So please know that. You're never gonna have it done and never come back to it. Believe me, it is a constant work in progress. And once you get you know, into your first job, you'll probably redesign it again and you'll keep working on it and keep working on it. And it's always gonna be something that's on the, that's, that you're gonna come back to. And I want you to make that a habit. And it has to be something that you like. So just because you got feedback, it uh, doesn't mean you have to take every piece of feedback. You definitely need to take it with a grain of salt and determine whether it's right for you. Do you agree with it? Do you not? It's okay not to agree with feedback because this is your work. Um, but if you keep hearing the same piece of feedback over and over again, you might wanna seriously consider implementing it. Uh, so iterate on your portfolio. Um, and then uh, it's Sandy and Devin, if uh, there's a homework thing, if you could go ahead and uh, copy that and put that into Slack so they have that. Uh, but you will also go ahead and make two more asks for introductory meetings uh, or some sort of introduction on LinkedIn. Keep that networking up. That should always be something. That's the minimum too. You can always go over, okay? Um, and then uh, 
next week, we're going to be talking about getting ready for interviews. So I just want you to focus on your portfolio this week and just make that as good as possible and then do a little bit of networking on the side. Does that make sense? Okay, great. Let's see. We have 27 people in the room. Uh, instead of breaking out into breakout rooms, let's go ahead and do our reciprocity ring right here. So um, you guys can, don't all have to ask for something, but maybe we can, I saw a lot of chatter on Slack about people offering stuff up, which is awesome. That's exactly what we're going for. So let's go ahead um, and let's kind of go around. And uh, if you have an ask for something that I need help getting introduced to, or I would like somebody to help me uh, edit my resume or whatever it is, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, who wants to go first? I can go first. All right. Um, I still have my portfolio to work to work on because I'm um, just getting back into my curriculum uh, boot camp after a long pause, about to move again. So just life is happening. So I would love for people to get input on my LinkedIn resume because I had to kind of bow the last time because I was leaving a coffee shop. So, um, so your LinkedIn maybe, um, and your LinkedIn resume? resume? Okay. Well, my LinkedIn. Yeah, okay. I have an I have it in um, Google Forms or Docs, but my LinkedIn information. Okay, so and I'm open to any tips on um, like how long does it take to do your portfolio? How long? Well, how yeah. long? Did, how how many people? How, how many people uh, measure the time that you guys spent on your portfolio? It's never done. It'll take as long as. <laughs> time yeah, as long as it's necessary i remember i mean i spent days on mine and i still don't even think it's anywhere near being done why so. can't it be where an ai can just intuit what i'm thinking visually and then just 3d like, maybe the maybe in the year 2400 <laughs> i don't know, have the time or i need to hire a minion to do it for me <laughs> um so actually, uh, Devin or Sandy, can you guys take notes on who calls out what, and then we can get that into Slack. Well, Sandy, you'll, you'll do that? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. All right, thank you. So we have a, a call for a review on LinkedIn. Who else? Who was it that was asking for an intro in um, Duolingo? That was Ariadne. Ariadne. Did you get did you get some help there? Yeah, uh, thanks to Adrienne, I, I reply her on Slack. Uh, it was closer <laughs> than uh, that I got to. Uh, she uh, sent me a post from LinkedIn uh, where there's a recruiter uh, for design. Yeah, I think it's for design. And she was posting about like all the different career positions they have now. So I'm going to double the, the work there uh, uh, contacting her for an intro and also like I got the the ask so I will follow up with her uh, just to learn more about of what can I do I think they have like different positions on uh, product design so I will see I think my only concern now that I've been looking to their page is that never mentions remote so uh, I don't know <laughs> but I will see uh, maybe it's worth it too <laughs> to change uh, cities. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Thank you, Adrian. Yeah, thanks, Adrian. All right, who else Can, has an ask? Um, anybody do an intro to um, IDEO or Frog? I might be able to do one for Frog. Okay. Uh, That's so awesome. taking a note for me. I was on a panel discussion. It was on diversity in, um, it, in design. What was his name? I, I, I can go back and look it up because he works at Frog and I had another contact, but she just left Frog. Her name is Alexis Puchek and she just left, but I think the other person is still there. So, okay, awesome. Yep. But you also want IDEO? Does anybody know anybody yeah. at IDEO? I don't know anybody at IDEO, but we'll keep looking. That's a good ask. All right, who else? I also uh, wasn't able to really get feedback from the first week on 
my LinkedIn, I believe. So that'll also be my ask. Feedback on LinkedIn for Krista. Okay. Yes. Gotcha. And I know I owe you guys uh, feedback that everybody who turned in homework, I got behind last weekend. My apologies. Uh, but I will get in there and start leaving feedback for you guys. Can you put your LinkedIn in the chat just so I make sure that we're connected and then I can have a look at it? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank you. All right. What else? Got a couple more minutes. Anybody has an ask? I have a quick ask. Yeah. Um, so I'm like in my last semester um, at, at ACC and I'm kind of looking for internships uh, to kind of like squeak one in if I can. <laughs> um, so if anyone knows of any internships, I'm willing to, to take an internship too right now. So, yeah. So it, does it matter? I, I actually found out about a very, it's not weird internship. I'll read it to you. Um, hold on just a second. Uh, from Dan Berlin, who's the editor of 97 Things. Looking, uh, he has a friend who's looking to bring on a UX research assistant in a gig work capacity part-time slash as needed. Um, you know, somebody who's in school that can do freelance capacity. Um, it would be paid. They would be doing, helping to tag slash code qualitative research, pulling quotes in support of findings, creating interview spreadsheets, acting as a scribe, organizing project assets. Um, I can give you the email if you would like to follow up. Yeah, right. that'd be excellent. <laughs> Thanks. I will, I will just copy the whole thing. That way you can read it. Cool. What else you guys? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just repeat what I put on the Slack. I attempted to use Slack, but everybody here, y'all know that I, I cannot read. That is crazy for me. So I'm just going to throw it out here. Um, if anybody either is in healthcare or UX research and you want to do like peer reviews, we can schedule some of these um, Zoom sessions to be able to do that. And I'm more than happy to do that for you, uh, with you. Um, the other thing I was just going to ask related to that as a, and re reciprocity ask if I can talk um, is maybe what we could do is keep the um, the option after we get through the group session tonight open to where we could go and use the group uh, fee, uh, the different breakout rooms on here so that might be something that we could do if, if that's okay with uh, the leaders you know just so we can have more than two people and it doesn't expire at a certain limit of time. Let's see what we can do within our, our schedules. All right, you guys, we are straight up at eight o'clock. I do have a quote for you guys. Hold on while I share it with you. It's just minimal, but I wanna leave you guys on a positive note. Carol Burnett, when you have a dream, you gotta grab it, never let go. So. I know you guys all have a dream of getting on to your next career opportunity. So please don't let go. I don't think it's, I don't think any of you need to give up. All right. Okay. Have a wonderful evening. Go work hard on your portfolios. I'm willing to stay. We can look at a couple or we can go ahead and schedule outside. Okay. All right. And use the Slack to um, also like schedule with each other some Zoom calls, okay? Or you can do Google Hangouts. There's all sorts of ways that you can meet with each other. Okay, who wants to, does anybody wanna schedule a portfolio review? I would stay tonight, but it's my anniversary. Ooh, happy so anniversary. I've been married Dad. for 20 years and my <laughs> husband is not happy that I'm on a call at eight o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. So my oh, apologies for so not let's staying. <laughs> Go have fun and tell us about it next week. <laughs> so uh, I would love, I'm so happy to set up. I can put my Calendly in, um, in Slack so you guys can just pick a time with me if you want. Um, or just kind of, we can plan on staying a little bit later next week, but I don't want you guys to have to wait for a portfolio review. So I'll go ahead and put my calendar out there for you. So you guys can pick a time. Okay. 
happy anniversary. Thank you. Oh, happy anniversary. <laughs> oh, All right. Thank you. Um, I'm going to close the meeting, but thank you guys. And we'll see you next thank week. You. We'll get ready for those interviews. Okay. All right. Y'all have a good Bye. night. Thanks. Bye. Bye.